G'day and welcome to the Ball Boys Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Today we are going to go through the tiers for all of the guards in fantasy basketball. Let's go! Jordan, open! Chicago with the lead! Bryant, to Jack! Not a game, not a game, not a game. We talking about practice. LeBron James with no regard for human life! And he's going to go! G'day and welcome again to the Ball Boys uh, Fantasy Basketball Podcast. I'm your host, Mitch Casey, and you can find me on Twitter or X at Ball Boys Fantasy. And like we said at the top of the show today, guys, we're going to go through our tiers for the guards today. Now, I was set to do some of these um, tier videos last week, but um, saw that the great man, Josh Lloyd, over at Locked On Fantasy Basketball was doing his last week. So put a few of those other, I guess, uh, more analytical uh, podcasts in there. But today we're going to be going through my tiers and rankings, and I'm doing them a little bit differently to I know um, what the great folk over at Locked On uh, fantasy basketball do just because again I went through in the previous video if you haven't already go and check it out we talked about positions in the fantasy basketball landscape and not only comparing the averages in each stat and each category in, d- in the positions but also um, some weird and wonderful uh, position eligibility in the NBA and for that reason I've decided to do these series instead of doing like a a point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, center. I'm going to be doing guards, forwards, and centers in terms of my um, rankings and tiers for these podcasts. So anyone who has point guard or shooting guard eligibility is going to be in this video. If you had a small forward, so if you were shooting guard, small forward, and I'm using Yahoo's um, podcast, positional eligibility to be the determiner. It's just kind of how I how I did this. You're going to be in the forward position. So anyone who's shooting guard small forward, you're going to be in the forwards mix because there's just fewer forwards than there are guards. And then anyone who's power forward center. So if you have a center eligibility, you're going to be in the centers video. So keep in mind that if a player isn't mentioned, double check their uh, positional eligibility and they might be in the future podcast as well. Now, Again, if you haven't seen or or done too much work with tiers before, what are they? They are a way for us to group and um, compare players of similar value in a range that I believe they should be valued going into our drafts. Now, in today's podcast, we're going to be going through both the category tiers and also points league tiers as well. So points league, obviously fairly simple. How many points per game do I expect them to average or fantasy points per game do I expect them to average? Got them in a similar group of um, output in there. For the category league tiers, I'm using my own projections and minus one value. So this is not a nine category ranking This is my minus one ranking that I'm using to group these players into certain tiers because I think that more reflects where people should be going in a head-to-head category league, which the vast majority of people out there do. If you are playing a rotisserie league, you can still look at this and sort of gain some value, but know that some of the more punt worthy players um, are going to be elevated maybe slightly higher than what you should be valuing in a nine category rotisserie league. But I still think you can get some good value out of these podcasts, this podcast and the next two. So let's get stuck into it. If it doesn't make sense, hopefully it'll make more sense as we go into the exercise. And this is, um, again, just a, a preempt before the Ball Boys season guide is going to be released and I can officially say it will be released and open next week. Um, so this is, I guess, the unofficial countdown um, releasing, I guess, where I view these players. Now, you're not going to get my actual projections or where I rank them and all my thoughts on them. But this is, I guess, uh, a bit of a snapshot as to what I'm thinking come the 4th of September of where these players are going. So let's go tier one uh, for Guards. Now, in category leagues, I've got three players here in this tier one. Uh, We have Tyrese Halliburton, Shea Gilgis-Alexander, and Luka Doncic. Now, I believe that these three players are the guys on the board for me at pick three through to pick five. Um, I think that all of them have an argument to go at pick three. Um, 
depending on how you want to structure your team, how you want to structure your punt build. Obviously, Tyrese Halliburton is someone who doesn't score quite as much as these other two, but puts up elite assists and elite steals, great efficiency, great threes, um, lacks the rebounds and blocks, but even still in a minus one rank, he comes out very, very highly and is someone that I think is uh, pretty much a lock for the top half of the draft. Uh, so anywhere between three and five, I think he should go. Shea is again in this range. He was very, very... Last year, if we were doing a retrospective rankings, he would have been in tier one by himself because he had a bit of a lead on everyone. I think he comes back to the pack a little bit, but because he was so far ahead of number four in a per game rankings, I've, you know, in my projections, I, I've given him a bit of a discount in terms of his free throw percentage. The steals, um, you know, maybe come back a tick. Uh, maybe the usage isn't quite as insane with Chet coming and a few other step ups from some of the younger guys. But even still, if I take all of those things into account, he still is very much at the top half of the first round. So I think he could easily slot into this little um, spot here. And then number three, Luka Doncic. Now, the only concern about Luka Doncic was when uh, Kyrie came over, we saw a little bit of a drop in his assists. But even still, he's sort of around this area. His points are still going to be super high. Rebounds for a guard, threes. His field goal percentage improved dramatically. His steals were up as well. Um, it's really just a free throw percentage. But again, if you're doing minus one rankings, this is where he sits. Um, so right at the top of the draft. So again, any of these guys, I'd be happy to take him at number three, four, or five. I think for me, I don't think there's anyone really that I would take ahead of those guys outside of Embiid and Jokic. That's sort of how my top five is sitting very consensusly. And I'm not going to talk about him too much, but then Jason Tatum to me is just locked in at number six as like that safe guy at number six. Uh, but these guys all have, to me, higher upside than him. So they are all in that area. And in a points league, it's just one player. It's Luka Doncic. Um, these other guys don't perform quite as well in points leagues. Luka's big points, rebounds, and assists gets him here. He is has argument to go number one in a points league. And um, yeah, so I think it's a different story. The big three there, I might have him slightly behind a Jokic, but uh, you could argue him to go number one and I wouldn't fight you on it. So to me, he's a clear number one in a tier of his own over in a points league. Let's go tier two. Tier number two for categories, we've got another three players. We've got Damian Lillard, Steph Curry, and Lamelo Ball. Now, the thing here is with Lillard. Now, this is, I am projecting him to, at the moment, be on the Portland Trailblazers. I still think that Damian Lillard will start the NBA season this year as a member of the Portland Trailblazers and play for the Portland Trailblazers. Similar to what we saw, and again, this is a total guess, uh, but this is just my gut feeling right now. Play like what we saw Durant do the previous season, but Durant was obviously, uh, in the end, traded to Phoenix. There just isn't the best offers out there, I don't think, right now for Damian Lillard. So I think the way things are looking and shaping up is I expect that he will start the season on the Portland Trailblazers. I think he's a consummate professional. So I don't think he's going to be bitching and moaning and whining like a James Harden or a Ben Simmons or one of those kind of players. I think he'll, he'll suit up. He'll go out there and do his things and play and do what it takes to keep his trade value really high and get himself traded to the best spot. But I think that's what I'm banking on and what I'm projecting at this stage. If he was traded to, say, like a Miami before the season, he might fall out of this tier. But as of right now, knowing what we know, I have him in this tier. And uh, I think that that's basically where his value sits. Um, I, I even have taken a little bit of a, a shaving off his projections. But in terms of head-to-head -head minus one rankings, he is he's a, a really, really good player because of those strengths in those areas. Um, Steph Curry, Lamella Ball also ran out this list. Steph Curry is pretty consistent and I guess not too much to explain here. Lamella Ball is interesting. Some people may be scared off by the injuries. And, and again, with these rankings here, there's no subjectiveness to it. I haven't moved anyone around based on risk or, um, you know, uh, injury profiles or age or anything like that. This is just simply the, the projection numbers and where they spit them out. So, um, for example, just because I've got Damian Lillard here at the top of this list doesn't mean I've ranked him higher than these other twos. This is just where my projections put them. So just keep that in mind when we're going through these ones, and you'll see a few more in a second that um, 
might also that that's also worthwhile noting. Uh, but yeah, Damien, sorry, Lamelo Ball is someone here. I'm not too worried about him and his ankle injuries. They were kind of freak injuries last season. Rolled his ankle twice and broke it once. So um, hopefully that won't happen again. Any player can do that in the NBA, but I think he's going to bounce back. And this was about where we were drafting him last season before the injury in the preseason. Anyway, I expect a similar sort of thing. I'm not too concerned. And in points league, this is where Shea Gildas Alexander is. So just a little bit of a step behind Luca. Doesn't quite have the rebounds and assists that boost the points or the fantasy points that a Luca does. So he's kind of in that uh, first round group after those big three in Embiid, Jokic, and Luca in a points league. So again, in a sitting in a tier on his own in tier number two. Tier number three categories. We're going with the three person uh, tiers again. So category leagues, I've got Trey Young, James Harden, and Kyrie Irving. Now, like I said, risk has not been calculated into these um, tiers. This is simply the projections and where they have put them. So for me, Trey Young is someone who's constantly slept on. He's currently ranked, I still think, at 27 on Yahoo. Criminal, in my opinion. I think he's a early second round player. To me, you've got huge strengths in the hardest categories to find outside of the first two rounds in points, assists, and free throw percentage. That is highly, highly valuable because if you have watched that show, and if you haven't, I would definitely check him out. There's lots of good information in there, but especially the free throw percentage, especially the assists, extremely hard to find outside the top 25. They dive a lot, and this is a player who is one of the best in both of those categories. So his um, value, and this is even just on minus one ranking, which I think for him is the blocks, is his poorest category. Either that or field goal percentage. Um, he, he shoots right up to the top here, uh, despite his nine category ranking. And again, remember my minus, tw- uh, minus one rankings have a 25% weighting to turnovers. So not completely disregarding them, but weighting them a lot less than the other categories as well. Um, So he comes up here. James Harden, again, he's still really good. He's still elite in assists. He's still really good in free throw percentage. He gets threes. He gets steals. He rebounds well for a guard. Yeah, he's not scoring 30 points a night anymore, but still a good fantasy player. Uh, If we knew where he was, it'd be much easier to draft him and know where to draft him. But based on my projections at the moment, a little bit less confident in the projections in him than I am with Lillard because I... In my opinion, I think there's less likelihood that he starts playing for the Sixers in this offseason. He is a bit more of that player that I think will um, whine and moan and maybe, you know, just not play well enough and the coach just has to bench him because he's sulking and, and not giving the team anything. So there's definitely risk there associated with me with James Harden, but this is where the projections have him. And then Kyrie Irving, again, risk associated, but he is usually a guy that, gives us first round value on a nine category league. The thing about Kyrie though, is he's not particularly boosted up with minus one rankings like someone like a Trey, LaMelo Ball and those guys, they kind of leapfrog ahead of him. So he in the minus one rankings falls to maybe that early second round. So again, that's kind of where I have him and I'm comfortable-ish drafting him in the early to mid second rounds, probably more so than the James Harden at this stage. Points leagues, we've got Ja Morant who flies up compared to category rankings. Now again, suspended 25 games. This does not mean I draft him at this point, but when he comes back, I expect him to be about a second round guy in a points league. Tyrese Halliburton falls down his percentages and elite threes. Doesn't really hold much weight here, but still good points, steals and assists. And then Trey Young in a points league, same category, uh, same tier as the category rankings as well. So that's where I have those guys. Let's move on to tier four. So here's um, where things get a little different between the categories and points. We start to catch up with the points leagues. Categories, I've got Fred Van Vliet and Donovan Mitchell here. You're probably looking at mid to late second round with these guys. Fred boosted in punt field goal percentage builds. Um, Great steals, threes, assists. Decent enough blocks from a guard. Half a block from a game is nice. And we know that positional value that that holds uh, with him. The free throw percentage is really good. Little concerned about going away from Nick Nurse's heavy minutes and how much that affects him. How much usage does he get on a team where they're not necessarily competing for titles? They want to improve and maybe make a run at a play-in tournament this year, but they're still in a a rebuilding phase. So how much is he going to 
get the ball in his hands versus the Jalen Greens and the Jabari Smiths, the Shen Goons, uh, and then Thompson and those sort of types. A little bit of a concern there. Donovan Mitchell, pretty much cut and paste what he's going to do last year to this year. Maybe a little step back as Mobley and Garland. Again, another year older. They're both younger than him. The steals, you're always a little bit cautious of them, replicating at one and a half per game, but should still have pretty much the same role. So he is here. Points leagues, again, this is where we've got Harden, the free throw percentage and threes, less weighting. Lillard and Steph Curry drop a fair bit. A lot of their value is that big free throw percentage and three-pointers, two of the best three-point shooters. Doesn't hold any uh, advantage in a points league, but still good points and assists and other counting stats. And then Kyrie Irving and Cade Cunningham makes his appearance in this um, list as well. Uh, So he is someone that... In my opinion, slightly more valuable in a points league, but in a second, you'll see Cade Cunningham's name come up again. Um, But he's just someone, I think, similar to a Luka, but to a lesser extent, just great points, rebounds, and assists. Those are really the big needle movers for points leagues. And, and, you know, those bigger guards that are able to get those triple doubles really do well in those kind of categories. I think his steals can come up, and and he he does block some decent amount of shots, again, for a point guard. Poor field goal percentage, turnovers not as impactful. Um, so he is someone that I think should go early in points leagues. And as we move over to tier number five and in category leagues, but he is, he is the top of the next tier at tier five in category leagues. I am still a little bit concerned about high volume, low field goal percentage, high turnovers. I'm not exactly sure how high the three point volume is. Um, whether it's, you know, two and a half versus two threes per game. Um, you know, you do have other playmakers in that team and Jaden Ivey and uh, Asar Thompson can playmake a little bit. So do the assists go to seven, seven and a half a game or do they stay around the five to six kind of a range? Those are sort of the question marks with K, but I am pretty bullish on him and I don't think last year's 12-game sample size is anything really to um, dissuade you from drafting Cade Cunningham. And I think... As far as I'm aware, his injury is is all good. He's completely healthy going to training camp. Darius Garland, Jordan Poole, Jamal Murray, and DeJounte Murray. So double Murray's at the end there. I am a big fan of Jordan Poole, and I've seen a lot of um, disagreement, I guess, out there with Jordan Poole's projections, but especially when it comes to category leagues and the, in, the value of his free throw percentage... I don't think people are quite grasping how important that is for his value because he is going to be someone that, whether he's the number one or number two guy, like he played 30 minutes at Golden State. He played behind Steph, behind Clay Thompson, off the bench. The previous year, when we were drafting Jordan Poole, we were drafting him in like the 50s last year, knowing he was coming off the bench. This year, he goes to a team where he's going to have the keys to the engine and we're not keen on him, I feel like it should have been backwards. Um, So I'm really, really pumped about Jordan Poole. We've seen stretches, uh, uh, again, the the previous year, he was coming off the bench still, but there were periods where Clay was injured. There was periods where Steph was injured. And in those periods, he was a top 30 player. Um, And he has neither of them now there. Now, Cole, Cole Kuzma is there. So he might have a similar level of usage as maybe a Clay Thompson did. But I expect the usage for Paul to be extremely high. Yes, the field goal percentage is going to suck. So again, in minus one rankings, that's not being factored into his because that's going to be his worst ranking. But the free throw percentage, the points, the threes, and the assists are all going to be really, really good. The rebounds, not great. But again, point guard eligible blocks, not great. Point guard eligible, you're not really getting many shot blocking point guards anyway. So who cares? So if you're punting the field goal percentage, this guy is got potential to be a second rounder in that kind of a build. And again, we spoke about the scarcity of free throw percentage and free throw percentage at volume. In 30 minutes off the bench, he put up five free throws a game at 87%. The year before that, he shot the percentage better at 92.5%. So if he can get that like free throw attempt rate to six to seven per game and do it at a high 80% clip, that is one of the better contributors in the entire league in that category. We saw how much a player like Shea benefited from that. Poole has that ability to be the... He has the potential to be the number one contributor in free throw percentage this season. That That's not outlandish to say. 
And I think that people are really sleeping on Jordan Poole. If you are getting him in the 40s and sometimes outside the top 50 in drafts, I think that is an absolute steal. So I am a big fan of Jordan Poole if you are especially punting that field goal percentage category. Um, yeah, the only, the only concern I have is the shutdown risk on a bad Washington team. But again, we thought that about Utah last year and they did do some funny things. But hopefully if your league finishes that earlier time period, he should be okay. Um, uh, Jamal Murray, he basically is back where I expected him to be after his injury. He's pretty much in the second half of last year, put up some great numbers and was back to his old self. So I think that puts him about here. DeJounte Murray, John Collins is gone. I expect maybe his rebounds to just tick up a little bit because in that starting lineup, you're replacing John Collins with Sadiq Bey. So there's a few rebounds there to be had. And I think DeJounte took a little dip in that. So he might grab a little bit of extra rebounds. The steal rate might climb back up a little bit. I'm projecting him to still be one of the better steals players. Outside of that, pretty similar to last year, um, but slightly better in those two categories. So that pushes him to this kind of a range for me. If you punt blocks, he is a good player to have in this build. Or even sometimes if you punt threes, he's a good point guard to have in that kind of a build to give you decent points, rebounds, assists, and also the steals. And that's what puts him here in the points category uh, or points uh, leagues at tier five. Those good points, rebounds, assists will get you fantasy points. And Darren Fox, again, kind of like a Jar Morant, doesn't see the dip in his value compared to category leagues in his lack of threes and his poor free throw percentage shooting, the lack of steals and blocks aren't penalized as much. So big points, big assists. I am a little bit concerned that he shot, I think, a career best, like 52% last year. So I expect that to come back a little bit. Um, and that would mean that since the arrival of Sabonis and some of those other players getting better, since compared to years prior, his shot attempts and his usage has gone down slightly. Um, whereas previously he might have been a second or early third round guy in a points league. He's definitely more of a third round guy for me in a points league now, uh, rather than someone that you could potentially reach for in the second. I don't think that that is the case anymore because I do expect a little bit of that shooting to regress a little bit this season. All right, TR number six, category leagues. We've got four players, Drew Holiday, DeMar DeRozan, Jalen Brunson, and Tyrese Maxey. Um, funnily enough, in this um, guards rankings, DeMar DeRozan is the only player who is not point guard eligible. Everyone else is point guard eligible, except for DeMar DeRozan, who only has shooting guard uh, eligibility on Yahoo. No small forward, no power forward. Weird, weird scenes. Uh, but anyway, he is in this list. Again, just a slight step back, I think. You know, uh, great field, free, go free throw percentage guy, decent field goal percentage, points, assists, low threes, low steals, low blocks. It's... It's, it's what DeRozan does. I expect it's going to be more of the same. Brunson might be a little bit lower than I think I've seen other people rank him. So I've got him more around um, like the 40s, you know, uh, late fourth, early fifth kind of a round guy for me. I think that maybe the shooting just falls back a tiny bit. He doesn't get the high defensive stats, gets hardly any blocks, not too many steals. Um... I, th I think he's good. I think he's fine. Um, but I just don't see the upside really for him to get much better than he was last year. And if not, I expect him to maybe take a half step back. And Tyrese Maxey, again, I think I spoke about this on maybe a mock draft with uh, Josh Lloyd. Again, if you haven't checked that one out, um, go back and look at the other videos or podcasts. But I'm in on Josh uh, Tyrese Maxey this year. I think that James Harden might have played his last game for the Philadelphia 76ers. I don't expect them to get a player equal to James Harden's usage back in a deal. They might get a lot of other pieces, but Tyrese Maxey is going to, of course, take another step forward in terms of the um, the food chain when it comes to um, Philadelphia's offense. And I think we've seen him thrive prior to that, which is why I was down on him last year, um, do really well. His assists probably will tick over five per game, in my opinion. And the issue with Tyrese Maxey before that was, Outside of his efficient scoring and threes, he didn't really do much. Um, so I think that those assists unlock more util utility in his value um, and someone who definitely uh, represents more of where I think people will be drafting him, which is around that 40 to 50 range for me. So he is a nice guy to target in that spot there. And Drew Holiday, didn't touch on him, but he's just ever consistent around this spot. Points leagues, uh, Jalen Brunson is in the same tier. Donovan Mitchell falls back again. 
dinged a little bit because of the lack... Oh, uh, sorry. The points leagues doesn't value three-pointers. Um, the free throw percentage isn't as... Uh, well, it's really elite in that other other format. The steals aren't worth quite as much in this here. So uh, the lack of rebounds and assists compared to some other guides pushes him back down here. DeRozan, same tier. Garland, half a tier back again. Just more the the value of his free throw percentage in three is just not quite as much as the other one. Jamal Murray and Jordan Poole. So Jordan Poole, despite someone who I expect to maybe score really highly, the lack of rebounds, steals, and blocks hurts him in a points league. You're not getting the benefit of his great threes and free throw percentage, um, which really helps him in that category league. So a little bit less valuable in a points league, in my opinion. But still, someone, if you can get him uh, around that 50 mark, I still think is a, is a solid enough pick because who knows what he could be doing on a week-to-week basis. He could have very good games and could potentially, in a week-to-week scenario, win you some of your matchups because he's going to have the green light for sure. All right, tier seven. Uh, this is where we have Ja Morant again. 25 games suspended, so that's not taking into account. That's not where I would draft him. I would definitely draft him a, a few tiers back, but in terms of when he is back, I expect him to be producing at about this level. And remember, this is minus one rankings as well. So this is without his free throw percentage. So he does have a few other issues. He doesn't shoot threes. He doesn't get steals or blocks. The rebounds are quite bad. Um, so look, he's great at scoring, great at assists, decent field goal percentage for a point guard as well. The steals are okay. But there's, there are a few other things that are an issue with Jama Rant. So even if you take the free throw percentage out, which is his biggest weakness, he still probably sits outside the top 50 or, yeah, about outside the top 50 um, for minus one rankings, uh, in my opinion. So then I've also got Darren Fox, similar kind of story to Jar. Um, we've taken out the free throw percentage. Again, I'm thinking he's going to regress a little bit in his field goal percentage. And this is where I've got Bradley Beal. So joining the Phoenix Suns, I think he takes the biggest hit out of Booker. And uh, Kevin Durant, who are not in today's podcast, they're going to be in the next podcast for the forwards, um, just because of their eligibility. I don't think Beal is the point guard on this team. He will be playing guard next to Booker, but I think that the player who will benefit the most in terms of an assist bump and do the majority of the playmaking on this team is Devin Booker. Now, Beal will do some of that. Like, that's just how basketball is played. It's not especially with the way this team is made up. I don't think you're going to see that Chris Paul dominating the ball kind of style. It'll be hopefully a little bit more of like that um, Golden State Warriors where the ball moves a bit more freely. Or that's what I would expect them to want to achieve. So he, he still will get his assists. He'll still score and still do his things. But I think when it comes to just playmaking talent, Devin Booker gets the nod over a Bradley Beal for me. So all this talk about point guard Beal, I'm not really buying into that. I don't think it really moves the needle for me to him. In fact, I think he's dropping in value, moving over to this team, in my opinion. So that's where he ranks here for me in the points league. Drew Holiday, steals aren't quite as valuable. His efficiency is not quite as valuable. Fred Van Vliet is someone who is significantly uh, hurt by the points league because, again, low uh, impact with the steals and blocks. The threes aren't super valuable. Um, he doesn't score in high bunches. Um, so his value is a little more in those low volume stats. Tyrese Maxey, this is where the drop in or the, the lack of rebounds, steals and blocks really hurts him. Um, and his efficiency doesn't really get too much weighting. So he sits around here just a little bit behind the other one. CJ McCollum and Scoot Henderson are big risers in my opinions when it comes to um, points leagues. CJ's Efficiency both in field goal and free throws hurt you in a category league setting. Um, scores a lot of points. Gets some decent enough assists. So he is um, he's not going to be in the category tiers for a little while longer, but he appears here. And Scoot Henderson, similar sort of story. Rookie guards, they're super inefficient. He's not a big three-point shooter as well, but he can score. I think he can pass really well. I think he'll get decent enough steals. He'll get decent enough playing time. So in a points league, you don't have to worry about all those inefficiency. You just want volume. So I think Scoot Henderson is going to get that, even if Damian Lillard, like I expect, is going to be on this team to start. They're not going to do that in the um, expense of not playing Scoot Henderson minutes, at least I would expect in the high 20s, because he is, uh, he is the future of this team. So they're going to want to get him reps. All right, let's go tier eight. We're going to go 10 tiers deep here, guys. So this is where, again, a lot of these tiers will start to fill up and players will be bunched together a bit more. So in category leagues, we've got Chris Paul, 
Terry Rozier, Ben Simmons, might be surprised to see him. Tyler Hero, Marcus Smart, Derek White, and Markel Fultz. So Chris Paul, for me, is an interesting one. I see some real risk with him. I don't know exactly where he's going to be going in October, but right now in drafts, he probably is going about this area, which is, to me, sort of outside the top 65 to 75, 80-ish kind of a range, um, sort of that mid mid rounds. <laughs> um, so I just don't love the fit with him and um, OKC. Okay, I think there's a lot of overlap in skill between, it sounds weird, but a lot of overlap between skill in um, Chris Paul and Draymond Green. You know, Chris Paul's a reluctant outside shooter. Draymond Green is just a bad outside shooter. They're both players who don't score a whole lot, plus defenders like the ball in their hands to play make. Um, not big off-ball movers, or especially Chris Paul isn't. I just don't know how that's all going to work, and I'm not sure how playing in the system of of um, Golden State will will work with Chris Paul because he's typically someone who dominates the ball, dominates the play, and and they play Chris Paul ball wherever he's gone. Whereas that's like the opposite to Golden State, who like to get up the floor, move, run off screens um, without the ball, and things like that, and. And I just don't know how well that's going to fit with Chris Paul. So I'm very hesitant to draft Chris Paul this year, plus the fact he's turning 38, or he has turned 38. I just, I think there's a real risk with him. Um, so, but at the moment, my projections, I've got him at about mid, I think 27 minutes per game. Again, older player, they're going to want to rest him. That's where the projections come out. He still probably will get his assists and steals, but... Um, First time, I think he's going to be falling outside the top 40, which he's done every single year of his career, which is admittedly very crazy. Uh, Ben Simmons is an interesting one here. I think we're getting more and more um, wording and optimism that he's going to be starting for the Brooklyn Nets at point guard. I don't want to get too excited because obviously I was higher on him last year than I should have been. I've always thought that the fantasy ability of Ben Simmons is underrated and something that isn't appreciated enough because of the uniqueness of his stat set. However, sometimes when you just play so badly, you can't get on the floor. So I have to take that risk into account. But when I project him out for 28 to 30 minutes, this is about where he comes out with great rebounds, assists, blocks, steals, field goal percentage. No, he won't hit threes. No, his his, his free throw percentage is going to suck. He won't score a whole lot. But again, minus one ranking, we take out some of that. We put him on teams. Maybe you are punting the points or you are punting threes or free throw percentage or all three. And then he becomes an extremely valuable player. Um, you know, think of Draymond Green, but maybe with more upside because of his age. Um, so I think that there is something to be said here for Ben Simmons at this spot. Um, Tyler Hero is in here as well. Again, hard to know. I'm expecting him to be on the heat to start the year, so my reflect, my projections kind of reflect that. Derek White is an interesting one. I've got him here next to Marcus Smart. I think he will get a bit of a bump just in terms of increased minutes and potentially an increase in playmaking responsibilities, but I'm not expecting a huge breakout. He did start the majority of last season, played 29 minutes, so small bump, but not massive not reaching inside the top 50 or 60 to get him, but if you can get him around 75, 80, I think that's fine. Um, again, doesn't really benefit too much in a bunch of uh, punt builds. His worst category is rebounds, which is not a common one to punt, but yep, you could get, uh, definitely do worse and he's relatively safe. And Markel Fultz is a similar kind of player. Look, I think he'll be solid. I've projected him as our starting point guard. Should get minutes in the high 20s, maybe even 30 minutes a game. Good assists, great field goal percentage. Fits like a punt threes build really nicely. But again, just lacks the scoring. There's a little bit of uncertainty there with the guards. I don't know if he's going to be like a 35, 34 minute night guy. Just limits his overall ceiling in my opinion. Points leagues, we've got Tyler Hero, Terry Rozier, Jalen Green makes an appearance. Don't have to worry about his uh, horrible shooting percentage. The scoring and high usage helps a player like him. Ben Simmons, again, good rebounds, assists, steals. Don't have to worry about his lack of threes and free throw percentage. He sits in the same tier as a category leagues. Fultz, pull. And then the last two here, Jordan Clarkson and Jaden Ivey. Again, more just volume shooters, guys who don't have to worry about their efficiency. Getting a bump in a points league compared to category leagues. Uh, I don't think actually either of them will appear on this list in the category leagues because there are quite a few issues with the rest of their stat set. But in points leagues, they are fine. All right. Let's keep going. We're 
going longer than I thought we would here. Category leagues, tier nine, De'Anthony Melton. Gary Trent Jr., the point guard himself, point guard eligible, Yahoo, 1.6 assists, Gary Trent Jr., the man, the myth, the legend. He is in at tier nine. CJ McCollum, Tyus Jones, Spencer Dinwiddie, D'Angelo Russell, Emmanuel Quickly, and Scoot Henderson. So this is where Scoot appears on category leagues. This is starting to get close to that pick 100 and just behind sort of area. I'm a big fan of D'Anthony Melton. I know uh, on the podcast that we did in the auction, oh, sorry, not the auction draft, the uh, snake draft that I did with Josh Lloyd, he disagrees with me a little bit here. I still think that there's value in a D'Anthony Melton. He's an elite steals player. He can get good value in limited minutes. He played 28 minutes a night. Oh, sorry. Yeah, 28 minutes a night last season. He was the 88th ranked player on a nine category rankings. Um, his worst category is field goal percentage, but he is kind of a player that's solid across the board, but elite in steals. So in a minus one ranking, he probably is someone more so instead of being 88th, he's probably more around that 100, 105 kind of a ranking. Um, But I still think there's potential for more. I think Nick Nurse is a guy that I think could love him. He could get a boost in minutes just being one of those guys in that, in that system. I don't think there's much trust in a lot of other players in that, in that team. You know, you've got PJ Tucker there soaking up minutes that I think easily could be spread out to some of those bench players. Um, what the hell do they get back from James Harden? Um, if it's a bunch of 50 cents to the dollar, does Nick Nurse play those guys much that takes away any of Melton's minutes compared to the offset of James Harden clearing up more minutes for him? I think not. I think it ultimately helps Anthony Melton in the end, um, despite... I mean, it, of course it depends on what they get back. We don't know, but at this stage on September 4th, I think that's how I'm projecting him. And I think good threes, good steals, solid enough assists, solid enough blocks for a guard, free throw percentage is okay. Um, just solid everywhere and elite in steals. And I think I feel pretty safe about his minutes and production. So those are my thoughts on Anthony Melton. Very happy to take him around, pick 100 with sort of your um, ninth, 10th round pick. I think is fine. Uh, who else haven't we talked about here? Gary Trent Jr. A little bit of downside risk here. Again, came off the bench, saw a drop in his minutes, but I think they still really need his shooting. There's not much shooting on that team. So I think you'll kind of see what he did at the end of last season. Really hope those steals stay there because um, that's what exploded his value the last couple of seasons. It still only has been two seasons that could drop away and that would destroy his value. So a little bit of risk there. Um, let's talk about Tyus Jones, starting likely point guard for the Washington Wizards. Now, some people are really keen on uh, a Ty, uh, Tyus Jones, but I think that we do need to remember that when he was coming off the bench, he wasn't, uh, of course, that great of a player. He was in nine category leagues, the 93rd ranked player. And you think, okay, that's amazing. When he was a starter, he was a top 50 player. But remember, he was replacing Ja Morant. So his usage was up. He also, based on all of his starting games, he shot 50% when he was starting, uh, which I would not expect that to continue. So even if he just made that 50%, something closer to what I expect to do, like 44%, it dramatically changes his output. Uh, But I think he's going to be a really solid steals guy. You can get late without too much upside in scoring rebounding blocks are going to be nearly non-existent. But um, the assists, the steals, he'll hit some threes as well and shoot relatively good from the line. Really solid late guy. So I think he's fine around that 100 mark. Uh, Spencer Dinwiddie, he was ranked higher in the points leagues, but really poor free throw and field goal percentage. I think Ben Simmons moving to the starting lineup hurts him. We saw when he went over to Brooklyn, his assists spike a little bit. I don't expect that to really be real come this season. So I'm expecting that to drop back down a little bit here. Uh, Let's talk Emmanuel quickly because I'm a big fan of Emmanuel quickly. I think that he is one over um, Tibbs. And when you win over Tibbs, that can only be good for your minutes. He is someone that in the last three months of the season averaged 31 minutes per game. Uh, He was the 72nd ranked player in that time. Now, of course, smaller sample size. He also shot the piss out of it. Shot 47%, hitting 2.63s versus his 45% for the season. And he typically is a poorer field goal percentage guy than that. So I'm expecting that not to necessarily hold, but could he be a mid-40s guy, 44%? Sure. 
Maybe the inclusion of Dante DiVincenzo steals a minute or two off him, but then you're also kind of replacing Obi Toppin's minutes with some of those other guys. So I, I think he's their sixth man, nearly one sixth man of the year. So I think he's just locked into that similar kind of a role. And as a guy who can get great free throw percentage volume as well, really good threes, points, and solid enough assists with close to a steal per game, that all equals maybe around that 100th rank for me. Similar kind of... Uh, value to a lot of these other guys. So do like quickly, and sometimes he can be had later in drafts as well. For points leagues, this is where I've got Westbrook. He won't be ranked in the category leagues because he has so many holes in his game, but in a points league, you can take him around that 100 mark. Um, Derek White, Marcus Smart, Trey Jones, Anthony Simons all just have some issues with their games in terms of uh, field goal percentage or threes, um, either not counting or... Uh, affecting them positively or negatively compared to category leagues here. I think we've mentioned all of them. Anthony Simons is someone who I am worried about. I don't know where he fits on this team before Lillard is traded. I don't know where he fits on this team after Lillard is traded. Are they going to prioritize Shaden Sharp? Really interesting one to watch. If I were them, I'd just be playing Lillard, Scoot, and Sharp. Simmons, Simons can come off the bench. His role in the NBA is probably more as a sixth or seventh man anyway. I don't think he's kind of a piece of their next playoff contending title contending team, but I'm not running the team. So he could definitely start, but I, I'm just worried about his role throughout the rest of the season. So I've reflected that a little bit in my projections. All right. And the final tier, tier number 10, we've got category leagues, Mike Conley, the, um, I think I remember um, Adam King referring to him as the starting point guard for the all boring team. And it is correct, but he is, Someone that if you want to get before you start taking flyers on guys and just locking a really solid guy, they've got really not much depth uh, behind Mike Conley. So they're they're going to be expecting him to go out and play 30 minutes a game. Um, And even though he's not a high upside guy, you could do worse than Mike Conley. And I don't think he's at least someone you're not going to drop later on. Um, So he should provide some late round value. Trey Jones, Jalen Green, the point guard himself. Anthony Simons and Bruce Brown. Again, point guard eligible. He was point guard, shooting guard, and small forward. I've put him in this one here because he's got two guard positions. So two to one. I put him in here. He's the only one who is small forward eligible. But he is in this uh, list here. I think he'll be solid enough. Good steals guy. Kind of does a bit of everything. And he can fit some funky builds, Bruce Brown. So if you were maybe um, punting assists or... Uh, potentially punting points or something like that. He is a guy that could definitely fill a point guard spot in those type of builds. If you're going a bit heavier, loading up on forwards and centers, um, he definitely is a good guy that if you miss some of the other guys earlier, you can get him late. Has good blocks, 0.8, uh, sorry, 0.6 last season, good field goal percentage. Um, just pretty solid across the board, and I expect him to have those minutes close to 30 a game again this season. And to round out the points, league tiers, Emmanuel quickly is down a tier compared to category leagues. Threes, free throw percentage, less obviously don't impact points, but he should still score and get it up. Um, Dennis Schroeder, just through minutes and volume, I think he might get there playing well in the World Cup. Malcolm Brogdon is in this spot here. Again, risk of injury, but not too much depth on the Celtics. He should at least get some scoring done. Colin Sexton, going to get buckets. Um, might be a sneaky assist guy as well. So in category leagues, he's not far away from this tier, maybe just outside, but um, he might be the best playmaker on the Utah Jazz. They don't have a lot of passing on that team. So I think he's going to be getting some decent minutes. I think he'll bounce back from last year, coming back from his injury. Bruce Brown is there again, and Kevin Porter Jr. again. He's going to still get minutes. When he does, he'll get usage off the bench. He'll still throw up shots, still get decent assists, but... Of course, in a category league, you're worried about the percentages. In the points league, you don't care. You just want that volume. You just want that usage. And I think he will get it still um, being sort of that main guy off the bench in Houston. Oh, all right. That was a big podcast, bigger than I thought it was going to be. What do you guys think about my guard tiers? Let me know down in the comments section below if you are over here on YouTube. Just a reminder, guys, that the Ball Boys season guide will be dropping next week, so stay tuned. There's going to be two different options for you to sign up for memberships. There'll be a platinum membership and a silver membership. Platinum memberships will get access to all of my projections, dynasty rankings, uh, future Q&A podcasts as well, whereas the silver memberships will be just like it was last season where you'll get access to my projections 
uh, rankings, both for points and category leagues. My category league rankings are finished. I'm still working on my points league, so whether or not that's out on launch, I'm not 100% sure yet, but it will be. It, if it's not, it'll be out very quickly after launch as well. Um, and if you guys are keen to get involved in the 30-team redraft league versing myself, head over to Apple Podcasts, put a five-star rating and review in that um, where you do your reviews. Leave your Twitter handle in there and let me know that you're keen on the draft and you will have your chance. There's not many dra- not many reviews coming through, so if you review, review now, you're going to have a good chance to get into the league to verse me. Um, but until next time, guys, I'll catch you later. Bye.